Wonderful gift of yourself to us, Eucharist. Help us to come to know our deeper level the gift that you've given us. Help us to appreciate the gift of your life and your love that flow through your sacraments and church in such a way as only Eucharist. Came into this world to feed us with your love, to sustain us, and bring us to everlasting life. We ask your voice here to lead us tonight, to guide us on your heart, to your presence. Our Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of our strict faithful, and then kindle with your presence of fire in your love. So, why are we here? Let me. To learn about communion. Learn about communion. Why are we here? Why are we here and big here? Why are we here in this world? Because God loves us, right? There's a lot of world about us. I love you so much. God sent his son into the world. God chooses to give his life to us. He loves us so much. So he sent his son into the world to be that delivery of his life and love. And Jesus Christ uh, established his church. And through his church, he gains to pour out his life and love upon the world. Through his church and through the sacraments. Today we're going to focus on a really important sacrament of the church, uh, the Holy Eucharist. So Christ is present in all the sacraments. Right? The Holy Spirit is present. Christ is there. He's present. His grace continues to pour out these sacraments. And the Eucharist is a very special way. It's Christ himself who gives himself to us. He feeds us and nourishes us. He one with us. We celebrate that gift in a very special way today. So, everything that gives us love, all of creation came to be because God chooses to share his life and his love with us. And creation came into being uh, by the word of God. So, God spoke, and everything came into being. And throughout scripture, the word of God is, is seen as powerful, of course. The word there is described the power of God's word, it's dynamics. We're dying by that word. So God's word has power to change the world. God's word is created. God spoke everything to be. So when Jesus Christ takes the bread and says, This is my body, that becomes a body because he is the one who's speaking. When he says, This is my blood, it becomes his blood because of the one who's speaking. And by the power of God's word, the bread and the wine become the body and the blood of Jesus. The power of God's word is, is very, very important. We talk a lot about the, the love of God as, as flowing water, you know, God's love flowing upon the world. God's grace is always flowing. God's love is always flowing. But from the cross, when the side of Christ is pierced, blood and water flow upon the world. God continues to pour out his life and his love upon the world. We celebrate the Eucharist, we press it again at once in the Calvary, we press it again in the Last Supper, and God's love is poured out. Thomas never stopped flowing. 
power of law, power of the word. And God wants to feed us on his journey. Look at the story of the Israelite people being set free from slavery and baptism in the Red Sea. We get a journey to the promised land. This is a from our journey to heaven. And on the way, they were dying of hunger. And God sent them on from heaven to feed his people. Any other questions? Exercise? Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me, blessed are. You think of remembering, you think of calling to mind something that once was. Remember our birthday, remember last year's birthday, you call to mind things. But the Jewish notion of remembering and anesthesis means to make present again what once was. So when Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me, he's saying, Make present again this last summer. Make present again this one Sunday. Every time we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of Mass, we make present again the cross. We are there under the cross. We make, we make present again the Last Supper. We are there sharing the Last Supper with Jesus, the apostles. We no time with God. We make that one sacrifice, that one Last Supper. Every time we celebrate the Mass, there's no time with God. There's this, God just is. So, so when he said, do it remembers to me, he meant to make it present again. So we gather on the altar, we gather around the table, we share in that meal, the last supper. So God continues to feed us. Make present again that sacrifice of Calvary. So we are there to experience that. And it truly be, the bread and wine truly become the body and blood of Jesus. Now, I've always believed in the real, substantial presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. I've heard from Christ's first communion. I've always believed in the real presence. And that understanding of that grew over the years. In the seminary, studying the great church fathers, studying scripture, my understanding of that real presence. It was stronger and stronger and stronger every day. What about my mind in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist? I never doubted it. Now I understand it more fully. What a gift it is. So we call this, this you know, we call it Eucharist. The word means to give thanks. You is good and Greek parts, it's gift, a good gift. And so we give thanks. If you go to Greece today, somebody says thank you, they say Eucharistine, which means give thanks. When we say Eucharist, we say we give thanks. And we also call it communion. Think of common union. Jesus prayed, Father, may they be one as you and I are one. Every time we celebrate, Holy Sacrifice of Mass. We are in union with God, receive God, divine light. So we are in union with God. We all come together, right? We all come to the same altar, receive the same bread, the same chalice. We come in communion with each other. We are in fear of the body of Christ tied together by this gift of God's divine life. We are also in communion with those. But dying, they're now in heaven, the heavenly banquet. So we're in common union with those that die of all things. Think about that. We're in union with God, each other, with all those that have died are in heaven. We all come together at one moment, one common union. Father, may they be one, as you and I are one. <clears throat> So I wanted to take just a, a couple minutes this week um, 
So I feel like uh, the manner and form on uh, the Eucharist gets a lot of treatment um, uh, from the Catholic Church and in education, uh, in Catholic education. And so uh, I think it's pretty obvious uh, for the most part to most Catholics what it is. So this week I thought I'd like to take a couple of uh, minutes and just talk about the matrix in a slightly different way. Um, and, 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 if, and I wanted to touch on a couple of the things that um, Father was talking about earlier. He talked about the anamnesis. He talked about the moment of the Last Supper. Uh, he also talked about the sacrifice on Calvary and then how all of that is made present for us in the sacrament every Sunday. Um, and then there's also this, this forward-looking uh, moment, right, where um, when we participate in the Eucharist, we're also getting uh, an early participation in, in the final meal, the final Paschal uh, meal with Jesus. And it, and it all happens all at once. So if you look at the matrix, there's there's a kind of a bleep section, um, which kind of covers, uh, which kind of which kind of covers uh, the past, uh, sort of, uh, so to speak. If the anamnesis part talks a lot about the Old Testament. Uh, so the bleep section uh, and also a lot of our traditions in the church come from the past too. Um, and then, so uh, that's like the past position of the Eucharist. And then the, the green section is the reality and sign. And that's more of a present sort of uh, situation. So what's happening right now when we participate in the, in the Eucharist? And you can see uh, Eucharist is middle right here, kind of building up in the steps. Uh, towards the end, uh, but the, the reality of science is the true presence of Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity is there with us in that moment, okay? So that's what's happening in reality in that moment. And then the golden section is kind of like, a, uh, this is what is to come. So there's graces that come from it, and there's the final Paschal meal that I talked about, where we'll all be together, Participating in this meal, it, it's like a, it's all together like a preview, but also we're participating in that meal early at the same time. If we come to it with the right disposition and we come with our, with pure hearts and, and we follow all the steps and all the way during Mass, then we come with our pure hearts and we, and we participate in that future sense too, in the, in the final Paschal meal. We participate with Jesus there in reality because he's there as well. And so I just thought it was a good opportunity to talk about how each of these things is present in each one of us, but is really especially obvious and beautiful in the Eucharist. And so you'll be able to look for those things in the other sacraments on the matrix if you choose to. But I also thought, how beautiful is it that God took all of human history and told this beautiful story and pointed at the one most important point of it, which was his son, both especially the, the death, which is partially what we celebrate in the Eucharist, and the resurrection which we celebrate. And that moment is the hinge for us, for all people. That moment is the hinge. And then he also lets us participate in all of those moments that led up to that. He lets us participate in that. He lets us participate in our own moment here. And we also get to be with him at the end at the Paschal Feast, and every Sunday, every weeknight, every Tuesday night mass, 
when the priest is there and he offers mass and the Eucharist is had, God folds all of those moments together into one. And if you're there with him, then you're present in all of those moments too. He's made all of history and all of what's beyond pivot on that moment, and it's all for you. And that's what you're looking at when you look at the Eucharist. And all of those moments are there for you in that one moment. When when the Father raises his hand up like this, that's what he's raising up, is all of those moments together at the same moment. So uh, there's another little interesting point um, that uh, Bishop Barron made this week. Uh, we've got only just a, a couple of minutes of, of Bishop Barron this week, but we're going to go ahead and play that, and, uh, and we'll see you on the other side. Remember in that sermon, in that discourse, Jesus says, I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. Feed on my flesh and drink my blood. Well, the, the people listening to him, they didn't take this in like, uh, what a wonderful sermon. They balked at it. And understandably, you know, for Jews of Jesus' time, it was expressly forbidden in the Old Testament to eat animals' flesh with blood. Leviticus and many other places expressly forbid it. And so for a, a man, a human being, to be talking about eating his own flesh and drinking his blood, it was not only disgusting, it was theologically objectionable. And so, of course, the people say, what, what is this? What did Jesus do now? in the face of that objection. You'd think, oh, oh, let me explain to you what I mean, everybody. I mean, it's a metaphor, you know, it's, it's a symbol. I don't mean this literally, it's a symbol. He doesn't do that, he does just the opposite. Amen, amen, I say to you, and that's his little code for, take this very seriously. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you, and the Greek here is very interesting because the word for, eat, the way human beings eat, in Greek is phagain. But Jesus doesn't use that verb. He uses the verb trogain. You know what trogain means? It means like the way an animal eats. So they're objecting. How could he tell us this crazy stuff? Unless you gnaw on the flesh or the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And then he says to them, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. In other words, when he had the opportunity to render his language more metaphorical, he turned up the heat on the language, making it more vividly realistic.
So I just realized I might have messed up. Could you folks at home hear the video as we played it? Anyone? All right, if you don't say anything, then I'm going to assume that you can hear it. Or I'm going to assume that you all started your Zoom sessions and then went out for ice cream. <laughs> Okay. We must be good. Are you sure they can hear you? Yeah, my mom. You should, uh, you should offer a test for all this information to get on it. There you go. Do it. Anyway, do uh, so um, I just wanted to uh, just recap real quickly what we heard from uh, Bishop Barrett. I can hear you. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Isabel. Could you hear the, uh, could you hear the uh, movie as well? All right, excellent. So we didn't mess it up. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, I just wanted to recap real quick uh, um, Bishop Barrett uh, just a little bit. He said that so concisely, so perfectly, there's not much to say. But um, the word that he uses, when I heard this the first time, it struck me. Uh, kind of dumbfounded. And none of my kids need to say anything to that right there. But um, he wasn't he wasn't talking about he wasn't talking about some some symbolic chew. Okay, he was saying I'll chew on my flesh. He was talking about it like an animal chews on a bone. That's the same word. That they use. It's not like, oh, consume me in some beautiful way or absorb my presence or, you know, take into me in some symbolic sense or something like that. It was real. It was eat my flesh. It was 100% real. And it was shocking to all the people that were there. And because of what happened, 3,000 people turned their back on Jesus. And walked away and said, I can't take this. I can't take it. I can't listen to what you're talking about. Only 12 people were left at the end. Only 12. And he turned to them and he said, Are you going to leave me too? And they didn't leave. Thank God. But that reality of the Eucharist. That fact that was so shocking in those days, it still rubs people the wrong way today. It still makes people uncomfortable. And you as Catholics should be very, very comfortable with it. That what you're doing on Sundays and at every other mass is you're eating the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body, blood, soul, and humanity. We are going to move on to sacred scripture. And we're going to hear three gospel passages. One of them is one of the six feeding miracle stories in the gospels, St. John. We'll look at one of the Last Supper. Um, Thomas. Then we look at the road to Emmaus of the gospel. So one of the key miracle stories, was other, and then the road to Emmaus story. I want you to listen for these words. He gave thanks. He took. He blessed. He broke. And he gave. 
He gave thanks, he took, he blessed, he broke, and he gave. Yes, he can build slow down, real slow when he comes to that those words. I want you to raise your hands. I know you hear it, you hear it, okay? Right. Well, the thing again is um, one of the six miracle feeding stories we use the one from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel that begins the bread of life this verse. The Lord be with you. The reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he sat with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. And Jesus raised his eyes, saw that a large crowd was coming to him. He said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. What good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who re were reclining. And also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the barley loaves that they had been that had been more than they could eat. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I mentioned, there are six of these stories in the gospels. They all have a common theme. Huge crowds gather because they're hungry. They're seeking something in their life. And there's always some meager gift here. You know, a few barley loaves and a couple of fish. And someone always says, What good are these? But they give everything they have to Jesus. In this case, there is a young boy with barley loaves. So barley loaves is food and very poor. This is all the food this little boy has for his whole family for a week. And he gives everything he has to Jesus. And Jesus takes those little gifts. And he breaks them, blesses them, he gives them, and 25,000 people are fed. And we're told they were all satisfied. And they were hungry and deep within themselves, hungry deep within, and nothing else could satisfy. And Jesus takes those meager gifts, he transforms them, and he feeds a crowd of 25,000 people. We're always told. They were satisfied, they were full, they were filled, their hunger was filled. And there's always leftovers. 
either seven baskets or twelve baskets. Now, Jesus is God. He took those five loaves and a couple of fish, multiplied them because 25,000 people. Why didn't he get it right the first time? Why are there all these leftovers? Now, there was a real strict rule back then. The person that brought the food to the potluck always took the, what they brought back. So whoever brought the food got the leftovers. Little boy now, with a couple of loaves of fish, a couple of loaves of bread, a couple of fish, always 12 bushel baskets of leftovers. What's he going to do with them? There's no refrigeration, you know, no, no preservatives. He had to give them away. That's the idea that is that this gift continues to be given away. Those, those leftovers that are still going around the world. We just, we just shared in one of those baskets a few minutes ago, a mass. That that gift is still going. For God's love here, there's no limit. Never, there's no, it's always leftovers. The more you give, the more you have. That's how God works. That's the, that's the point. Because God is always left over. Because God are no limits. We're going to move now then to the last supper. And again, this is the words. He gave thanks. He took the blood. He broke. He gave. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the last summer. I remember um, a few years ago teaching uh, RCA, RCIA class to a uh, group people in Manistique. And uh, there's a young woman who was in her early 20s and she's coming to church. And I made a comment about the last summer. And I can see she had a little puzzle in her face. I said, Got a question for you, sir? And she says, what's that? What's the last summer? That was the question she asked. She didn't the last couple years. So I think that, you know, really, our starting point oftentimes in the culture is much lower than we think. 
I grew up, of course, in church, and I knew when I was seven years old, that's Jesus was there with disciples, and then we died. The night that he instituted his gift of the Eucharist. So we know what the Mass looked like that day. We're going to look at that in a few moments. We know that, the, that this Last Supper was, in fact, the Passover meal. And the, the Mass that we celebrate today has the, the image of that Passover meal. So we know what they're like. And I might just make a couple comments about the Last Supper. So first of all, when, when the priest stands at the altar, he stands in the person of Christ. It's not us who stand, it's Christ who stands in us. We're called to do that. When Jesus said, do this in memory to me, he's calling his apostles and his successors then to stand in his place. So when the priest says the words, take and eat, this is my body, given up for you, it's Christ who speaks. When Christ speaks, the bread then becomes his body, and the wine becomes his blood, and the Christ speaks. It's a very, very, very humble experience for a priest to do that. And I really doubt it. Um, almost really got to ordination. I just really doubted, you know, my ability to, to do that, to stand in the presence of Jesus. But then in that first mass, I knew it. it was not me. It was Christ. He was standing there talking through me. And everything came together. And I believed it was Christ in me. The last one, Jesus talked about indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Began this in sessions a couple weeks ago, the image of the vine branches. Well, Jesus at the Last Supper said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And we looked at that as, you know, I always look at that as, as you know, the branch is just, the, or the, the vine is like the stem of the trunk, you know, the branches are kind of connected to it. But that's not what he's saying. In the language of, of the original uh, New Testament, the word divine includes the whole plant. It includes the, the roots, the stem, the branches, the leaves, the fruits, everything. And we are the branches, so we are part of Christ. He's the whole vine. We're the branches, we're, we're part of Christ. We're, we're, the, we're the mystical vine. And this connection with the Eucharist makes us the mystical body. The divine life is now in us. And we are part, we're connected to this divine life. We are the mystical body here on the body of Christ. We become then what we receive. We become the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ. We become what you receive, the body of Christ. And Augustine always said, we have such communion. You become what you receive by Christ. Amen. You're called to become that by Christ. We're going to move on and look at the early church. It's really important, it's really important to be in the seminary. So we started studying, you know, the church fathers, scripture we born out, the roots of the Eucharist. How did the apostles understand? The skin of the Eucharist. How did the church fathers understand this gift of the past of the Eucharist? That's our next book. So you can go and read now the road to the mass story. Take place on that first Easter Sunday, the road to the mass.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to the village, to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a mighty, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. And some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things? and enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village, the way that they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us. For it was nearly evening, and the day was almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that he was with them at table. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were our hearts not burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus, my Lord Jesus Christ. So there are two prevailing themes in Luke's Gospel. One is the journey to Jerusalem. Everything happens there. 
the death, resurrection, and ascension all took place in Jerusalem. Over and over again, the scriptures that Jesus faced a sort of like cliff on Jerusalem. It's all about going to Jerusalem, right? Second prevailing scene that permeates this gospel is lost coin. Lost coin, lost sheep, lost son, part of the son, are all in this gospel. So this is the first Easter Sunday, mid afternoon. And two of his disciples are going not to Jerusalem, they're leaving Jerusalem, they're going to Emmaus, seven miles west. Makes no difference where they're going, they're going the wrong way. They're going, they're leaving Jerusalem, they're going the wrong way. So the reason the Lord seeks them out, they're lost. He walks with them on the journey, even though they're going the wrong way. Especially because they're going the wrong way. And they invite him. It's faith. He interprets scripture and he takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. Now, remember the rules back then, you stand on very, very stringent, it was a very hard task. Well, the person inviting always makes the meal. Always the host. Now Jesus is the guest, right? He becomes the host. That's what was shocking. Heard it for the first time. That's the point. So we invite Jesus. We say a mass at 5:30. We time, we schedule the mass, and we invite him to be there. And he became the host. Jesus took the bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to John. He became the host to feed us. So last supper was the institution of the Eucharist. The road to Emmaus, the first Easter Sunday, is the first Eucharist of the church. The risen Lord is the reason. Apostles are there. They recognize him as great in the now, in the early decades, they called the Mass the breaking of the bread for the Lord's Supper. It wasn't called the Eucharist until later, or the Mass until later. But every time you see in Scripture, they gathered for the breaking of the bread. <laughs> okay, you are listening to me. <laughs> They're celebrating Mass. So the question then is, you know, you don't have to so then these guys are going the wrong way, right? They go back to Jerusalem and they're there in the upper room. The risen Lord seeks them out. They're lost, out of found. They turn around, they're, they're, they, their hearts are burning within them, recognizing the bread of the bread, and they go back to the church. They go back to the upper room. And the risen Lord appears again, walks through the doors. And he, he appears again. And then the Lord appears to him. He says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And they were there. Now, St. Luke was a beautiful gospel. And he just continued writing. We call the Acts of the Apostles, right? So after the resurrection and ascension, Luke continues to write about the early church. I have a handout for you, big sheet. And this is a little account of the early church. So, right in the second chapter, I don't know if I So, the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles. So, the first chapter of Acts of the Apostles is basically the period of Pentecost, right? 
So this is this is the very beginning then of the church after the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit. They devote themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to prayers. Every day they devote themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking the bread in their homes. So they gather daily to celebrate the Mass from the very beginning. Go on to the 20th chapter of Acts of the Apostles. On the first day of the week, when we gathered to break bread, to so break the bread, Paul spoke to them because he was going to leave the next day. He kept on speaking until midnight. So it's a really long mass back there. We go to Now, the next section I want to look at with you is an account from Justin Mark and his work called the Apologia. Now, Justin Martyr was uh, a very early church father. He was part of St. John's Church, St. John's community. St. John lived to be in his late 90s, so he was the oldest apostle to survive, the last to survive. And Justin Martyr was part of his community. He knew St. John. Now, because Everybody knew what the break of the bread was. They celebrated daily. We don't have a lot of you know, really, really good accounts of that celebration of Mass, right? We do have this gift from Justin Martyr. Justin Martyr detailed exactly what they did and exactly how they understood the breaking of the bread, the Mass. We go through this very slowly with you. Very important. Now think about as we go through this, think about our mass, okay? How we celebrate the mass today. The day we call the day of the sun, called Sunday, all who dwell in the city or country gather in the same place. The memoirs, the apostles, and the writing of the prophets are read. As much as time permits. The memoirs of the apostles are the gospel, right? And the writing of the prophets are the Old Testament. So, what do we do? We begin to ask, we do the word. We break open the word from the Old Testament, the Psalms, from the writing of the prophets, of St. Paul, and the gospels. When the reader has finished, he who presides over those gathered. Admonishes and challenges them, imitate these beautiful things. So it's a homily. Now, go back one step further to the Last Supper, go back to the Passover meal. That's precisely what happened. They would read from sacred scripture from the law and the scrolls, and then the one presiding would talk about that. They would admonish the people, connect. With the writing of the word of God, the people that are there are connected together, bring it together. When Jesus gave his last supper discourse, that's precisely what he was doing. He was preaching, he was giving them the homage. This is exactly how the apostles celebrated the Mass. So we all rise together and offer prayers for ourselves and all others, wherever they may be. So what do we do? We stand and we offer prayers, right? The general institutions. This is how the apostles celebrated the Mass. When the prayers are concluded, we exchange the kiss. So, I don't keep it, right? We don't kiss anymore, especially during COVID. But the sign of peace. Then, someone brings bread and a cup of water and wine mixed together. The one who presides. So every time we celebrate Mass, the water is mixed with wine. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. So back, you know, in the time of Jesus, wine was kept in these animal flasks, 
It was very concentrated and it was an arid, dry climate. It was warm. So they brought this warm, concentrated wine and they put cold well water in it. And it would become regular wine, cool wine. That's what Jesus did last night. He mixed water in the cup. Well, it's also symbolic of human life, uh, water, and divine life, wine, coming together. In the cup, they become indissoluble, become one. Divine life and human life coming together in the chalice. They also symbolize the blood of Mark, the holy sign of Christ, the cross. Put back now into the chalice. It was really important. It's not a valid man, but water into the wine. Human life and divine life coming together. He takes them and offers praise and glory to the Father of the universe. In the name of the Son and Holy Spirit. In the simple time, he gives thanks. This is the first time that we have in the where the word Eucharistie is the word the Eucharist. We have been judged worthy of these gifts. We have included the prayers, thanksgiving, all the present give the voice to say, Amen. Amen means yes, I believe. So again, think about our mass and how this parallels our mass. When people reside to hear complaints, the people that have responded to those call, deacons give. The Eucharistic bread and wine, and take them to those who are absent. From the very beginning, the early church brought the Eucharist, the body of Christ, to those who couldn't be there. Whether they were home ill or confirmed, whatever. Now, our Mass today, you know, the deacons and, and the priests and others bring communion to those who can't be there. They did the same thing. The early, early days of the church. This food we call Eucharist. First time we've heard this word now. No one may share it unless he believes that our teaching is true, has been cleansed in the bath of forgiveness of sins, and rebirth, and lives as Christ's love. So we say that we believe. What we really is going on here. It's Jesus. Everybody has to believe that to receive our Eucharist. We have to be baptized and our sins forgiven to be able to come to the Eucharist table. And we have, we have to be living as Christ taught. So we're called to live the Christian faith. So even back then, this didn't give the Eucharist to everybody and to believe and be baptized and live in faith. We do not receive these things as though they were ordinary food and drink. Just as Jesus Christ, our Savior, was made flesh through the Word of God, the took on flesh and blood, our salvation. So true through the Word of Prayer that comes from the food of which Thanksgiving has been spoken. Becomes the flesh and the blood of the incarnate Jesus in order to transform our flesh and blood. This is precisely how the apostles understood the Eucharist. It becomes the incarnate flesh and blood of Jesus. Why? To transform our flesh and blood. The apostles were with Jesus every day. They, read, they, they experienced the resurrection. They experienced the reason more. They were there at the Last Supper. They were there in the road to Emmaus. They were there the first Easter Sunday evening. The risen Lord walked through the walls. They were there. This is how they understand the Eucharist. It is the real angel presence of Jesus Christ through flesh and blood. The incarnate Jesus. How can people stay away from Mass? If Jesus Christ is there, 
the creator of the universe, who holds our salvation in his hands. How can we stay away? How can we stay away from this man? This is the greatest gift in the world that God chooses to give his life to us. Why? Because he loves us. He wants to spend eternity with us. He wants us to share his divine life. He shared our human life. Save us. Amen. Let's pray. And the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for this evening. We thank you for the sending your only Son into our world. Take our sins of the cross. We share our humanity. We share the humanity. We ask you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit upon us to pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of all sweet people. And the kingdom of the sins of God. I bless you, Father, Son. Oh, I did a bad job of stopping to ask if anyone had any questions tonight. So um, I think we want to stick with the family rosary. Uh, so let's, I'm going to get that loaded up and we'll be a couple minutes late for that. But I think if it's all right with Father, we probably could start next week with any questions that people have. Uh, probably it'll take you a week to think about something like So uh, be thinking of your questions. All of you at home, prove that you were listening. And uh, I'll get a family rosary loaded up. Thank you very much, everyone. Confirmation next week. And shoulder. It's very, very hard on them. And of course, we're praying for unity in our country, unity in our church, that we have the priority of Christ in all that we do and all that we say, and that we promote his teachings without any kind of hesitation. And I'm very grateful for our support team tonight, Patrick Alog and Damien Schmidt, Marty Jury, and Karen Moran, my co-host out in Phoenix. Hi, Karen. Hi, Father Rocky. Great to be with you. I'm sure you've got lots and lots and lots of prayer intentions. I heard something very, um, very encouraging the other day. Um, a, a friend of mine, his daughter teaches in a Catholic grade school. And every day they watch the Lenten lessons on the Mass and they read the lesson and they also listen to the audio version. This is happening in many, many Catholic schools around America. And the kids love it. The teachers love it. One of the reasons they love it, not only do you learn a lot, it's free. They don't have to... <laughs> pay for any books. They don't have to register. Because folks, that's our business model, quote unquote, at Relevant Radio. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. So we bring everything to people for free. And then people help us because they feel part of the mission and we're all in this together. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This Our Father is for Pope Francis, and no matter who the Pope is, we love him, we pray for him, and we obey him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Three Hail Marys for an increase in the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus. Forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. It was Tuesday, March 9th. On Tuesdays and on Fridays, we pray the Sorrowful Mysteries. And the first Sorrowful Mystery is the Agony in the Garden. Karen? Robert in Tulsa, Oklahoma, asked that we pray his daughter and son-in-law return to the Catholic faith. And he writes, uh, he's been inspired to start his daily rosary during this Lenten journey, thanks to Relevant Radio. Um, Rosemary in Houston, Texas, Texas asked that we pray for her brother Amador, who just lost his wife to COVID. She writes that her sister-in-law was so faithful and such a loving person. Um, they were married 55 years and his heart is broken. Mm. His family's trying so yep. hard to take care of him. So let's pray for uh, Amador in this devastating loss. Amador. Yes. Sarah El in Elburn asks that we pray for Irene and her grandchildren. Sharon in Santa Cruz, California, asks that we pray for her mother, Betty, who's 96 years old, and she's suffering mm. from chronic illnesses. We'll pray for all of that. It's great to hear that these prayer requests literally come from all across America, Tulsa, Houston, Santa Fe, California. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. I want to compliment everybody who's praying with us this evening. So many thousands of you show up every evening to pray the rosary. I'm edified, it inspires me, it helps me to be a better priest. And uh, I have to admit, that sometimes it's a challenge for me with all of my duties and responsibilities to show up every night, get this out at 7 p.m. Central Time. But I figure if I don't show up, how should I expect the other people to show up? So we're all helping each other. And I'm really grateful for our team in the background that uh, has amazing. the flexibility and the savvy with telecommunication skills that we can bring this rosary to you every night. Yeah. It's been fresh content every night since last March 15th, with the exception of um, a little vacation we took over Christmas time. So the second several from mysteries is scourging at the pillar. Karen? Uh, Adriana in Sacramento asks that we pray for her, hus her husband, Rosendo, who has stage four cancer. Um, we want mm. healing and strength through this journey. Um, Alice in Sacramento writes, uh, asking for prayers for her cousin, Michelle, who's back in the hospital with the serious heart issues. Um, prayers for her dad and all the family members to stay healthy and safe. And we have a prayer here from Anne in Washington Island, Wisconsin. Pray for friend Dorothy in the hospital in Madison, that the doctors can find the problem with the LVAD that keeps her heart going. Um, Anne in Greeley, Colorado is asking for prayers for her son, Anthony, that he can get a job at Home Depot as soon as possible. And for everyone who's looking for a job. And we're asking this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So happy that Anne on Washington Island contacted us. Where people don't know, it's a very remote island at the end of Door County. Population 600 year round, only accessible by a ferry boat ride for about a half hour. And the only way they can listen to us would be through the cell phones on the app. And Greeley, Colorado out there in the front range. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery 
is the crowning with thorns. Folks, we receive several thousand prayer requests every day for the rosary and the mass, either by phone calls or emails or letters. Many go to our website and many, many use social media. I wish we could get them all on air, but you simply can't. Karen, let's take a few more. Bill asks that we pray for Tim, who is critical in the hospital. And Carol in Reno, Nevada, asks that we pray for her son and his wife, who are going through a tough time right now. Um, mm -hmm. Karen in Austin, Texas, asks that we pray for Morris. And let's see, Donna in Wernersville, Pennsylvania, asks that we pray for all who are grieving the loss of a loved one and their mental yeah. health during this time and the loneliness and fear that we have during the pandemic. Don yeah. in Lakewood, California, asks that we pray for Claire and all college students. And Anne in Minnesota asks that we pass their job or Good. see the path that God is leading him to. Good. And for all those who have loneliness and fear out there and worried about COVID, you know, the numbers are the numbers. They've come way, way down, 80% since January. And the vaccines have gone way, way up. So it's just a question of time, right? COVID doesn't last forever. It's, you know, it's, it's a pandemic. Pandemics, you know, last a year or two, and then you're on to the next thing, right? So <laughs> uh, be of good cheer. The third okay. sorrowful mysteries of crying with thorns. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. Karen? Cecilia and Carlsbad ask that we pray for her daughter, Kate. Her daughters, Kate, Sophia, and Madeline, ask God to protect them from harm and keep them safe and to heal them from their illnesses. Um, mm -hmm. Charles and Colleen in Mesquite ask that we pray for their daughter, Brittany, who has three children. She's with an abusive man in a very uh, dangerous situation. We're praying that she mm -hmm. gets out of that relationship and finds a safe place for her and the children. We're praying also for their friend, Ken, who's in his early 60s, and he's just found out his PSA is not normal. Um, uh, he's having a biopsy, so we want that to uh, be healed and no worries. Christine in North Cape May, New Jersey, asked that we pray for Michael, who was homeless until three days ago. He's now in his 10th rehab for al alcoholism in two years. Mm -hmm. We're praying that God will guide him with wisdom and give him peace. And uh, 
relieve his IBS and anxiety so he can stay in the rehab facility and um, just cover him What's with wisdom and patience. IBS is What's IBS? Um, irritable bowel syndrome. So oh, that, IBS. Oh, poor guy. That will oh. make you and move alcohol, along, right? That, so, so his first name right. is, yeah, his name is Michael. Michael. We need prayers Okay, Michael. Michael, if you're listening, pray to St. Joseph every day. Our Father, yes. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion and death of our Lord on the cross. Karen? Christine in Elk Grove Village asks that we pray for Brittany and nephew Owen, who both suffer from depression, self-harm, mm. and suicidal thoughts. We're praying oh, for her children to come back to the faith and for the end of abortion. Um, Cindy in Wyoming, Minnesota, asks that we pray for brother-in-law, Mike, that he'll be fully healed of his cancer. Um, mm -hmm. Both he and her sister are given emotional peace through this, and God's, um, God allows them to find their way back to the church. Corlene in Atlanta, Michigan, asks that we pray for Ellen, who passed away this week. Um, Dolores in Riverview, Florida, asks that we pray for her niece, Beverly, and her husband, Mike, who have uh, who has COVID-19, was taken to the hospital, and he can't breathe. Um, mm. She's writing, please pray for them. She prays the rosary with us. Diane in Chicago asks that we pray for healing of Alice. She's in hospice, that she be set free of pain and anxiety, and that um, those who love and care for her feel the loving presence of our Lord and his mother in these very hard times. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, angels and saints who accompany us from heaven with the evening family rosary across America. In a sense, you could say it was across the universe. Mm. All the angels and saints participating. Thank you, moms and dads out there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, families, cousins, everybody who joins the family rosary across America because your prayers make it more powerful because the family that prays together stays together. And we're families praying with families, families praying for families, and the family is the domestic church. As the family goes, so goes the church. As the church goes, so goes society. So this is one of the best things a family can do is gather in the evening, wherever you are, might be in the kitchen, might be in the living room, might be in the family room, might be on the deck, might be in the garage, might be in the car. It's okay. You can pray the rosary anywhere. There was a question on Patrick Madrid's show the other day. Should you pray the sorrowful mysteries every day in Lent? You can do that, but uh, normally... Mondays and Thursdays are the Joyful Mysteries, and Mondays and Saturdays are the Joyful Mysteries. Tuesdays and Fridays are the Sorrowful Mysteries. Wednesdays and Sundays are the Glorious Mysteries. And since 2003, when John Paul II uh, presented us with five luminous mysteries, those are on Thursdays. And um, it's good to meditate on these. And that's why we put the religious imagery up on the screen so it can call to mind uh, that event in our Lord's life. And hopefully by praying the rosary, you'll come closer to Jesus Christ, because that's what it's all about. Mary brings us to Jesus. So thanks for listening. If you haven't had a chance to sign up for the Lent.